Okay, so the first thing you need to think about when you are looking to build a natural shelter is find an area of woodland that actually has lots of deadfall, lots of branches and logs that are accessible for you to build. The last thing you want to do is to be dragging these logs miles to your shelter. It just, you expend all your energy, you're going to get tired quickly. So find an area where there's lots of deadfall. At the moment I'm in a woodland, I'm in a pine forest, um, but it's right adjacent to a deciduous forest. So it's quite nice, I've got a mixture of both pine trees um, and other trees, evergreen trees as well, where I can use those leaves as shelter. First thing I'm going to do is, obviously I've found my area of woodland that's got lots of deadfall now. Um, I'm going to now look for uh, basically two trees to put my kind of ridge log in, the middle log. And I'm going to scout around, I don't want to find a piece of rotten wood, uh, it needs to be kind of if it's dead for obviously it's going to be dying but it needs to be rigid this is an important pole this area this ridge line um, it's the strength of the basically it's the strength of the shelter um, and it's going to be the main part of the a-frame that's holding it up so I'm gonna have a scout around uh, see if I can find the right sized one as well but I'll also show you the site of where I'm going to build this shelter so I've chosen my site um, I've got big kind of big tree here big pine tree here and then another tree there and what I'm going to do is find a log, there's some long deadfall over there that's long enough to lie basically up at an angle about that long so I'll need to not measure it out but just roughly gauge an idea that it needs to be roughly probably about five or six foot longer than the distance in between here that way where it will stick out like that and I can lean it up and pinch it in between these two trees like that and that will form the beginning of the A-frame and then I can put uh, smaller logs down the side of it Okay, one of the things you want to be wary of, this looks like a nice long ridge. This could be a really good ridge log, it's very long, it's not too thick, so it's not too heavy to lift. Um, however, what you want to be wary of is this one, if you can see, is actually touching the ground. So it's been on the ground a while, and if I roll this over, you'll see, especially up this end, if you have a look, if I roll this over, you can see fungi starting to grow here and that that's definitely a, could be a weakness in the log because it's been on that ground it's very damp i can feel that it's actually very supple um, and that it's to be honest pretty quite rotten so this could break quite easily under pressure so be wary of picking one straight off of the ground i found a different one that um is slightly off the ground and i'll just go and show you now okay if you look at this one here it's actually as it's fallen down it's above it's about half a foot off the ground almost all the way along so for me that is ideal uh, it's been kept off the ground it's been kept sort of off the damp uh, it should be fairly dry this one and basically I'm going to cut it at the right length and use definitely use this one as my ridge pole but as a little tip for you just be wary if they're lying dead on the ground they may be a bit mouldy but this one has only been on the ground at the bottom end but this whole part up here has been up off the ground so it should be a lot drier than the other logs because we've had quite a bit of rain recently okay so at the moment this log is too long for what I need um, so basically I'm going to cut this log here I've got a folding saw here this is the Barco Laplander and you can see a review of this actually on our on our channel TA Outdoors I'll put a little link up to it in a box in the corner um, so I'm just going to saw this bit here it feels nice and dry it's been off the ground um, I'm going to saw it longer than I'd need it to begin with uh, there's nothing worse than cutting it too short and then it not being able to fit in the gap between those two trees so I'm going to saw it a little bit longer uh, than I normally would have it as you're sawing um, the deeper you get into a log generally these two bits because of the weight of this log pulling down they'll tend to pinch together like that and your blade gets stuck so if you can lift the log up a bit it then opens up that gap and it makes it prevents your saw from getting pinched
as you can see here the reason I cut that angle on that top section is just so it can fit snugly against here I noticed there was a knot in the tree just here that was kind of protruding so I've used that to my advantage cut, cut an angle in there and now I can put all my weight on that top ridge pole and that is not going anywhere the base is tucked in nicely down there and you can see it's pushed up against that tree that way any weight pushing that way is going to put pressure on the tree so it creates creates basically equal weight on the tree um, but yeah there's a little tip there if you cut an angle on that top section just helps it pinch in a bit more and now that's not going anywhere now i can start to collect sort of smaller size logs just for the edge of the a-frames the other thing is with these bits here these notches which you often get in felled trees that have either been felled or they've uh, just fallen over in a storm I would not cut these off, I would not pull these off, these can act as a good support for those logs going down the side, there's another one here, perhaps I'd make it smaller, I might nick it off there, but other than that these are really handy to actually lean logs against, so I wouldn't cut these ones off. So now as you can see I've collected a few logs down there, varying different sizes, I'm going to collect a lot more, the longer you have your side poles coming out, your side logs, the wider your section will be. So I want mine not too wide really because I don't need it's a one person shelter but I can get I can place them more vertical if I see from this angle if I place them more vertical there it's going to be a narrow angle on my A frame if I place them wide there then I'll have more space as I go in Okay, so you can see the actual beginnings of the A-frame shelter. I've got my ridge pole, ridge log going down here, and then I've got the first part of the A, you can actually see that, a log coming down here and a log coming down there. I've actually cut these so they're the exact same height. The rest of the logs I pro probably won't really cut, it takes a bit more time, but if you look, they're actually slightly at an angle this way towards this tree here, and all that's to do is to help basically even the pressure on this ridge log all the rest of them will be leaning slightly just slightly forward and if they're all leaning the same way then that's equal pressure then on this ridge log and it should make for a more stable support okay wood is all collected in different sizes time to build well there we go i've uh, pretty much finished the majority of the A-frame shelter uh, I've still got a few gaps to fill in but um, I'm a bit restricted with time that's taken me pretty much an hour um, that's not including the filming that obviously I've done in between as well so uh, yeah, I'd say it takes about an hour probably by the time you've collected all your, your logs and things like that um, I've tested it, I've pushed against it I've put a lot of my body weight against it uh, just to double check that everything is stable and secure it's a good way of checking just pushing against it uh, at different angles just to check that everything is secure what I've done is like a cross latching up the top going all the way up the top so I've cross latched it basically just to give it that added support and to ensure that all branches uh, all, the, all the logs are actually leaning properly against that ridge log it's important that they come over the top of the ridge log here just so they've got that support on that actual ridge log and not on, they won't then slip down below and fall down so it's more for safety reasons really just to try and keep that cross latching going and then filling in the gaps with other logs okay next step is I'm in a pine forest and there's lots of bracken and fern um, over just behind me so I'm going to collect a load of bracken up and use that uh, just to kind of waterproof rainproof this A-frame shelter as you can see lots of bracken here I'm coming into mid-October now so it's starting to die back uh, so ideally I'd, I'd do this kind of shelter in the summer and do an overnighter in the summer but I thought I'd do a video to show you guys uh, just how to make it but I'm going to use this bracken definitely uh, there's plenty of it there cut it down near the base near the roots 
um, and just be careful don't pull it with your hands okay I was saying about pulling it with your hands the reason why is I've got a bit that's kind of dying back here if you pull here with your hands yes most of the time you probably would be able to pull it out however your hand can generally slip and as it slips it cuts through here as you pull through and it actually cuts up your hand quite badly so I suggest either using a knife or just a small blade just to nick it at the roots there you do want this long bit here because this is going to go in between those logs on the A-frame shelter and help pinch it in place. If you just pull up the top, the actual leaf part up here, if you just pull that off then you've got nothing to secure it to your shelter. So definitely use the majority of that to help secure it to your shelter. Try not to use your hands, it will, if you skid, it will cut your hands up. Okay, so got about five minutes worth here, three batches of bracken or fern, and uh, going to put this now onto the shelter, and I'll show you why I left that stalk long when I cut it. Okay, so here's my fern or bracken with the long stalk. The reason why is that I can tuck it facing backwards in these gaps, push it in there, and then that sits nice and snug. Now with lots of those in there. Um, I can get that fitting nice and tight and if, it's, if the stalk's pushing too far into the actual shelter then I can just snip off the ends. But now I'm going to fill it up with the rest of these and see what we get. Okay, so almost the finished article really. I'm strapped for time now so I need to head back. But as you can see I've placed a load of ferns. It doesn't look like much on the outside. Uh, after some wind and rain that will start to settle down that will probably last a few weeks um, before they start to die off and thin out but you know if you're doing short overnighters in the summer it's you know brilliant really um, that's sort of one side and I told you about leaving those stalks long on the on the fern or the bracken and that definitely helps to lock it all in place this is the other side again you can see you wouldn't even know it's a shelter really uh, looks a bit messy from this side, but who cares what it looks like on the outside? It's what's on the inside that matters, so let's check it out. Okay, so this is the inside. Um, what I've done is any kind of uh, bits of bracken that's sticking down any of those uh, roots and those long stems, I've trimmed those off just to make sure there's as much space as possible in there. There's definitely enough room for two people, um, and it can comfortably fit one quite easily. Let's check it out. Okay, so I was saying about two people, you can see there's easily enough room for one person lying down that way and enough room this side for another person lying down that way. Um, our, this is kind of a rush job really so there's definitely some gaps still. Uh, what I'll do is I'd put more logs definitely to fill in those gaps there because if it did rain quite heavy it might push that bracket in. So I'd put some more logs there. Nobody's perfect so that's you know just evaluating here. What I've done as well, started to do, I'm running out of time there, is I've actually started to use the back of my blade, the sword here the sword, <laughs> the saw, I've used the back of the saw here and I've just started to sweep the bottom bit up just against the side here and that acts as kind of a wind shelter, draft shelter just to stop those cold drafts coming in in the mornings um, and it also helps me clear an area uh, that I can lie on um, and if I wanted to make this extra comfortable I could get a lot more bracken and I could lie that down in here uh, you know pile it up a bit couple of because you, you really you want to be raised up off the floor when you're sleeping you don't want to be directly on the floor so I could raise it up you know maybe a foot or something and that would provide something comfortable to sleep on and help keep the draft and the cold out but for now all I've done is just started to move with the back of my blade just started to push it up against there just to stop that draft and I do that all the way around the edges just to seal off that draft obviously there's some gaps at the back there which I would patch up with some sticks and uh, just make it a bit it's a bit more sealed and waterproof but underneath it feels pretty secure um, I'd put a lot more bracken on this but I don't really have the time at the moment it's probably something I can come back to hope the videos helps you guys um, hope you got a couple of tips 